Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. And ask yourself what kind of breathing is comfortable right now. Sometimes the body likes long breathing, sometimes it likes short. Sometimes the mind likes long breathing or short. So see if you can get them to agree. What feels best for you right now? And then try to stay right there. Try to keep that going. All too often we hear that the Buddha talks about how things are impermanent and you have to accept the fact simply that they come and go. But that's not what he really taught. He said there are some good things you're trying to give rise to and you try to keep them going. Other things that are not so skillful, you try to stop them from arising, and if they do arise, you try to get rid of them. So here, if you get a sense of comfort with the breath, try to maintain it. Realize that you've got something good here. It's going to be a good basis for the mind. It gives you a sense of well-being inside, so you're not so hungry for the kinds of pleasures that come from doing things that are unskillful. This quality of appreciating what's good and maintaining it, this is an important part of the practice. One of the reasons why we're commemorating a John Fung's passing today. He was my teacher. I owe everything I know about the Dharma to him. And so I feel it's my duty to keep on practicing, because it's something good I got from him. And when you get something good like this, you don't want it to die from the world. In the same way, when you've got a good teaching, you try to maintain it and have gratitude for the teacher. Because he, again, of course, he had gratitude for his teachers. It's a good example that he set. But he also had to deal with a lot of hardships in life as he tried to maintain what was good. We think of the forest tradition now as being widely praised. You, know, you see pictures of the king and the queen bowing down to the forest monks. We forget that it wasn't always that way. They met with a lot of hardship. They met with a lot of criticism. Almost every great John was criticized for being accused of being a communist. All kinds of disrespect that was shown to him, and yet he didn't waver in the face of that. And that's a good lesson to take, too. Not only the, the techniques that he taught for meditation, but the techniques he taught for living well. And living well doesn't mean living with a lot of wealth. It means living knowing that you're not harming anybody. You know, the people may dislike the way you practice, as long as you're confident that what you do know is really the Dharma. You shouldn't let yourself get swayed by that. We're here not to be popular, but we're here to do what's right, to do what's skillful. If we think in those terms, then it's a lot easier to deal with the criticism that we're all going to receive in life. After all, the Buddha himself was criticized. And if people could criticize the Buddha, well, what about us? There's always going to be things that people will find to criticize. The important thing is that when you know something is good, then you stick with it. The problem is sometimes we think something is good and we stick with it, and it's just a matter of stubbornness. That's why it's good to learn about the Dharma, to know what the Buddha actually taught, to know what kind of teachings really are going to lead to happiness, lead to harmlessness. And then you maintain that. So it's up to us to learn the Dharma, to learn what really is true about how true happiness can be found, and to remind ourselves that we can't let ourselves be swayed by the words of other people. It's amazing. The words of other people don't have any weight. If somebody yells at you, they can't knock you over. And yet it often hurts more than if they actually hit you, or at least we let it hurt more than they actually hit us. So just remember, that's just the breath of the mouse, and you can't take anything solid or secure about the breath out of other people's mouths. After all, sometimes you do something wrong and they'll say it's right. You do something right and they'll say it's wrong, and then they'll change their mind tomorrow. So you can't let the opinions of the world sway you. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to study what's right and then try to maintain what's right. Because this is what makes life worthwhile. We learn good things, and we remember them, and then we put them into practice. Otherwise, we're like animals and don't learn very much. Or worse, because we often can do a lot more harm than ordinary animals can do. So to maintain our status as human beings, when we learn something good, we try to maintain it. We try to remember it and keep put it into practice. That way we take the lessons of our teachers and the lessons we've learned from the Dharma, the Sangha, and they really do make a good change for both for us and for all the world around us. And this is what comes from maintaining the good, even when there's a lot of pressure to, to do otherwise. You hold by your principles. As a John Fuing once said, make sure that you've, you've got rock inside you, and not just cotton fluff. Or another time he said, 
make sure that you're like heartwood and not just like the branches of a tree. The heartwood is strong, it doesn't change. It doesn't get affected by anything. It sticks with its goodness. Just make sure that your goodness is goodness and not just stubbornness. Then when you're sure about it, okay, then, then stick with it. That's how goodness develops in the world.